Hello, in this video, you're going to learn how to create an interaction system inside Unreal Engine. So when I go up to this door, we can see that my HUD updates to show that I can interact with it. And if I press the E button, I can interact with this door and open it. You'll also learn how to expand this interaction system so you can make it so when the player interacts with any object, it does whatever you want. To do this, we're going to use Blueprint Interfaces. Blueprint interfaces allow us to easily communicate with other blueprints inside WorldGate. So, to create this, we can just right click and go Blueprint, then select Blueprint Interface. Just call this the Interact Interface. And then open this up. And we're just going to go to Functions and go Add New Function and just call this Interact. We then just want to compile this and save it. The next thing we're going to do is create a quick blueprint which our player can interact with. So, to do this, we can right click, go blueprint class, and just select an actor, and just call this the test underscore blueprint. Open this up, and then go to components and go add, and just add a cube. Then we want to go to class settings, and go to interfaces, go add, and look for the interact interface that we just made. So here it is. Then just go compile and save. And here under interfaces, we should see the interactive event that we made. If we head over to the other graph, find some free space and just right click and look for event interact. So because this test blueprint has the interact interface, we can basically reference what will happen to it when we decide to interact with it. For now, when something interacts with this cube, we're just gonna drag off here and look for print string and we can just make this a cube we can then compile and save this and i'm just going to drag my cube somewhere into my level so the next thing we're going to do is make it so our player can interact with this cube i'm going to make it so when my player presses the e button he can interact with objects inside of the game so i'm just going to go over to my input corner right click and I'm just going to go input and select input action and I'm just going to call this interact underscore input action. Next, I'm going to open up the input mapping context which has the controls for my game and we just want to go add new mapping and we want to select the interact that we just made and I'm going to make it so the player has to press the E button in order to interact with objects inside of my game. So here, I'm going to look for the E key. And here it is. Then we can just save this. And if I just go over to my blueprints and to my first person character, I'm going to find some free space and just right click and look for input interact. And here it is, interact, input action. I'm just going to click this arrow now, whenever my player presses the E button, this started node is going to fire. And what we're going to do is a line trace, and we're going to check to see if there's anything in front of the player that they can interact with. So I'm just going to drag off started and look for line trace by channel. Where this is going to start, we can drag in the camera and just drag off here and look for get wild location and connect this into star. We're going to make this end a couple hundred units in front of the camera. So to do this, we can drag off the camera and look for get wild rotation. Then we just want to drag off here and look for get forward vector. Then we just want to drag off here and look for multiply. And then just right click here and change this to be a float. Right click on this and promote it to a variable. And we can just call this interact distance. Compile this, and for now, let's just make this 150. And then we just want to drag off this get wild location and look for add. And uh, select this one. And whoops, I'm just going to move everything so it's a bit tidier. And we basically just want to connect this value into here. So we're getting the wild location of our camera. So we're getting 150 units in front of our camera 
and we're just adding that together. And then this will be the ending location of our line trace. Then we want to see if our line trace hit anything. So if we just drag off our hit result and look for break hit result, then click this arrow. We can check to see if we hit an actor. And if we hit an actor, we can check to see if it has the interact interface. So if we just drag our hit actor and look for does implement interface. And the interface that we're going to check to see that the object that we hit has is the interact interface. So I'll look for it. And if that's true, so I can hold the B button to quickly create a branch and just left click and that'll create a branch. If that's true, then we are going to interact with that object. So I'm just going to drag off here actor and look for interact. And we want this one, interact message. And I just connect this into true. For debugging purposes, just so that you can see the line trace, change this to be for generation. Now if we go compile, can I close this? Now if I go play and I press E and I go near this cube, we can see it print strings on cube in the top left. And we can see that red thing, that was my line trace. To turn that off, we can just go back to for generation and make this done. But this is helpful for debugging purposes. The next thing we're gonna do is add a crosshair to our player screen. That way it's a bit easier for them to see what they're interacting with. So to get started creating this, I'm just gonna go to my content folder and create a new folder for all of my images. So I'll just call this images. I will head inside this folder and then somewhere attached in the description of this video, I'm gonna make sure to include an image of a crosshair. So it'll be this. You can just drag and import it into your images folder. When you import this image, just make sure to right click and go to Sprite Actions and apply paper 2D texture settings. This will just make the image a bit clearer. The next thing we're gonna do is create a user interface, which will have this crosshair. So I'm gonna go back to my content folder, right click and create another new folder. This time I'll call it user interfaces. And I will head inside here and I'm just gonna right click and go user interface and select the widget blueprint. I will select the user widget and I'm just gonna call this my player underscore widget blueprint. We can head inside here. Then I'm just gonna go over to the palette and look for a canvas panel and just drag and import it into the hierarchy here. Then we just wanna look for an image and drag this somewhere into the screen. For this image, go over to anchor and select the middle one. This will just make it so this image is anchored to the middle of the screen, no matter the resolution of the screen that we're playing on. For the uh, position X, make it zero. And for the position Y, also make it zero. Then for the brush, we just want to change this to be the crosshair image that we just imported. So here it is crosshair. Now it's a bit small. We can either manually change the resolution by playing around with it here, or we can just go here to size X and size Y and determine a value. I already played around with this and I found 200 by 200 looks pretty good. Then for the position X, we just want to make this minus 100. And for the position Y, we also want to make this minus 100. And this will just make it so the crosshair is directly in the middle of the screen. We can then just compile and save this. And the next thing we want to do is just go to our blueprints folder, enter the FPS character, and even we can play, we're just going to make this um, player widget blueprint appear on our screen. So I'm just going to drag up there and look for create widget. And that widget is going to be the player widget blueprint that we just made. I'm going to right click here and promote this to a variable in case I need to reference this in the future. So I'm just going to call this more on um, player HUD. And then finally, we can just drag up here and look for add to viewport. And now if I just go compile, when I play my game, I should see this crosshair. And this just makes it a bit easier to see what I'm interacting with because for the line trace system that we made earlier, it comes from directly off the middle of our camera. And this HUD will basically place the widget in the center of our camera. So you may have noticed the image is still kind of blurry. To fix this, we can just go over to our crosshair, then go to search and look for filter, and just change this to be trilinear, 
and then just save this. This will make it so the image is a bit more clear. The next thing we're going to do is make it so the player can open a door using the interaction system that we've just made. To get started, if we just go add and select add feature or content pack, then just go content and add the starter content to our project. The starter content comes with loads of assets. One of them is a door. Next, we can just go to the blueprint folder, right click and go blueprint class, select an actor and just call this the door underscore blueprint. We can open this up, then go to components, then go add and look for a static mesh. I would just call this the door. Then if I just select the static mesh, I'm going to go to assets and look for door. And I'm just going to select this one, static mesh door. And the idea here is, I'm going to make it so when the light interacts with this door, we are going to rotate it 90 degrees and the door will open. Okay, so to do this, if we just go to our class settings, and add the interact interface. Then if I just go over to the event graph, I will compile, then right click and I'll put event interact. So event interact, we're going to make this door open. We're going to make this door open using the timeline. A timeline basically allows us to make certain things happen over a certain duration of time in Unreal Engine. To use it, we can just drag off here and look for add timeline and I'm just going to call this door open timeline then we just want to open this up and then just make the length of this one second so this is going to be how long it takes for our door to open we just want to go track and edit float track and just call this the um, door open track right click and add a key to curve float at time zero we want this to have a value of zero then right click again and add another key and we want this to have time one and at time one we want this to have a value of one we can click these arrows to kind of um, see our timeline and if we just right click on this first one and go auto this will just make the timeline a bit smoother we can then go to our event graph and right click and look for the love node so this one lerp and just connect this into the alpha so what this will do is this lerp We'll move from a value of A to B over the duration for alpha. So initially, if I go to my door, it has a rotation of zero. We're going to make this have a rotation of minus 90 in B. And over the duration of um, one second, this will move from A to B, and this will make it so our door will smoothly rotate and open. So we can drag in our door, drag up here, and look for set relative rotation right click here and look for split shut your pin and just connect this into z next if we just connect from update into here then go compile and close this we can drag our door somewhere into our game and now if i click play and i go up to my door and i press e okay nothing is happening and i think i know why when we imported um this starter content some of the meshes have no collision and this needs to have collision in order for us to interact with it. So if we just go to the store and go to browse, open it up, and if we go here where it says show, we can go to simple collision, and currently the store has no collision. So to give it some collision, we can just go collision, and let's go add a um, box simplified collision, and as you can see, it adds this collision. The area in green is the collision. We can now just save this. So now if I go to the store and I press E, we can see it opens. Nice. So with that, we've created a simple interaction system and a door that the player can open. In this video, we're going to update the player's crosshair. That way, when the player goes to an object that they can interact with, the crosshair will also update. That way, it'll just make it a bit more clear. To get started, if we go to the images folder, and attached in this video, I'm going to make sure to include an image. It will be called Crosshair 3. We can just drag and import this into our images folder. And this is what we're going to update our crosshair to when we can interact with an object. If we just select this image, right click and go Sprite Actions and apply paper to the texture settings. And we just want to go over to our user interfaces tab, open up the player widget blueprint. 
and just select this image and give it an appropriate name. So just call it crosshair, then check this is variable. Then just go compile and save this. Next, we just want to head over to our blueprints folder and open up the first person character and find some free space and just right click and look for event tick. So this will update every frame and we're going to check to see if there's an object that the player can interact with. And if there is, then we'll update the crosshair to be the um, crosshair three. We can actually just um, copy all of this code as it's going to be very similar apart from this last bit. So just go control C and control V and paste this here. So then tick, we're going to do a line trace. And if our line trace hits something which has the interact interface, we are going to update the player HUD's crosshair. So if we just drag in the player HUD, get it, then because we made the crosshair variable, we can reference it. So if I just drag off here and look for get crosshair, then I can just drag off here and look for set brush. And we want this one, set brush from texture. And we wanna change the texture to be crosshair three, the crosshair that we just imported, if this is true. If this is false, then that means we are not hovering over an object that we can interact with. So we're gonna change the crosshair back to be the normal one. So I'm just going to copy this and paste this. And if this is false, I will change this to be crosshair one. Okay, let's just compile and test this out. So we'll go play, go up to the store. We can see it changes to be crosshair three, which means I can interact with it. And now if I press E, I can open the store. Nice. Let's just go back to our FPS character. And I'm just going to move the event tick back a bit and then I'm gonna select all of these nodes and then I'm just gonna right click and go collapse the function and I'm just gonna call this update crosshair. And then if I just double click the hand side here, it will have um, all of the nodes that we just made. And then whilst we're here, I'm also just going to comment this and call this handle interaction. And we can just compile and save that. So that's all for this video. And this video is part of my course series, how to make a complete survival horror game in Unreal Engine 5. If you're interested in learning more about it, make sure to check out my courses. You can find them somewhere in the description of this video. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.